Well, Can I suggest you to put this last part at the beginning? Okay. <laughs> First, you get to know what SDGs are. Then listen. <laughs> Namaskar. My name is Saurabh Nanda and this is another episode of Such Conversations Matter. But this is not just another episode because I'm really proud of this episode. I'm talking about sustainability and the sustainable development goals of the United Nations in this particular episode. It's all about circular economy. And in this time of coronavirus, all of us need to know more about sustainable uh, ways of living. And that is what uh, my guests today, who are Daisuke Kanako, who is the CEO of Taneno Chikara, Yumi Okuda, uh, who's also one of the directors at Taneno Chikara, and uh, Michele Brezzi, uh, who was my senior in Awaji Youth Federation in Japan, and he also uh, worked a lot with Taneno Chikara in Japan. These three people are very passionate about sustainability. And that their passion has uh, got them involved in all these projects uh, we're doing. Now, you might be wondering what is Taneno Chikara. Taneno Chikara is, is a project which has taken a piece of land in rural Japan and changed it or con you know completely converted it into uh, uh, this beautiful oasis of uh, learning education about sustainability, about circular economy, composting, permaculture, earth bag houses, and so much more. And earth bag houses is their most prominent feature, and that's a lot what we're going to talk about today as well. So it is my request to all the viewers today that please research about these things, permaculture, circular economy, natural farming, earth bag houses, uh, composting, um, using less and less chemicals. Because if coronavirus has taught us anything, it is that we need to change how we do things. We need to live more sustainably. And these guys are already doing it. They are leading the way. They are trying to educate the world about it. So without wasting any more time, guys, let's get on with the interview directly. Hi, guys. How are you? Hello. <laughs> I'm good. It's just a bit rainy here in Osaka. But great. Great. Konnichiwa. 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 Ohayou gozaimasu. I think they're saying that Osinawaji right now is raining. <laughs> oh, that's, that's great because uh, in Punjab also it's raining. Uh, we have monsoon season right now, so <laughs> a lot of humidity and heat. First of all, let me just tell you guys that I was, I was kind of, uh, you know, uh, unexpectedly surprised as to uh, something like the seedbed is happening in Awaji because it was just something uh, I had not expected at all. So uh, thank you so much for doing this. And uh, that is what I would uh, like all the uh, people who watch this video to know also that what the seedbed is, what is Tane no Chikara? Hi, Tane no Chikara is a seedbed. は、をやっ<笑> ヤマの通リズムを提供してます。はい。ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ち
like uh, we're making a new society and there's a thousand species of um like a okay, veggies and trees and birds and mushi bugs bugs mm -hmm. and <laughs> Yeah, there's about a uh, uh, one thousand species over there, and they, you know, living each other, and we live together, and then um, we educate people how to live together and how to think about it, and you know, how to live sustainably. Yeah, that's the uh, what we do in in Awaji. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would like to add something to this. Um, the the thing is that uh, the way they're explaining it is uh, the result of like two years of hard work, and like the thing I know that like saying like one thousand species is not like a big bomb itself, but like if you think that the place where everything started was a field that has been misused for more than like 20 years with like chemicals and through a really like organic revitalization of the soil, uh, Taneno Chikara, the company and like Seedbed Project uh, managed to, in only one year, like completely change the whole like area. So basically the idea is trying to rebuild the ecosystem there. And when it's ecosystem, it's not just like doing uh, farming, it's also like uh, making it in a way that also other animals, insects, um, snakes, uh, frogs, um, ta tanuki is like a, a um, special uh, Japanese animal, or also a wild boar. It's like it, it's amazing how in one year that place that looked like a desert became all of a sudden like nature, it's like back to nature. But it's like, um, um, how I would say, like, not useful, but like, um, it's kind of like productive nature for human beings as well. Mm -hmm. So there are animals, animals are helping the soil and the plants to, to get more nutrients. And at the same time, we as humans can benefit from them by eating, eating like plants, eating fruits, eating vegetables, uh, roots, and like whatever like the nature can give us. So that that's that's amazing. I saw this play that place two years before they started, and it was so sad. And when they came, I was the happiest kid ever. It's like, oh my god, some someone is coming here to do what I really wanted to do. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right. So, and that's exactly uh, how I felt. I mean, if 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 I had to live uh, more on Awaji, I would I would prefer working with you guys. Uh, then, you know, all the other things, uh, I mean, if, if given a choice, Tane no Chikara and uh, Bioagri and Sustainability Living would have been my top priority. So thank you so much again for doing this. Um, how did you get this idea? So, like, you were in your corporate jobs. Was it difficult for you guys, all three of you actually, to just, you know, leave all that office work, laptop and everything and just do something with the soil, with the nature? How did you get this idea? えっと、ま、日本で働いていて、え、ま、東京で働いていたんですけど、え、持続可能な社会にしていくため、には、その都会で暮らしていても、持続可能な社会になっていかないなというところがあって、じゃあ、この社会、持続可能な社会、サステナ
And there I kind of um, managed to learn about permaculture and the importance of permaculture. Uh, I don't know if you want me to like talk about that or we can talk about that later anyway. And through permaculture in Australia, I moved to Japan. And then in Japan, I met amazing people. Uh, like um, my kind of colleague at the time uh, who were interested into um, landscape design, but like related to um, food production. Mm. Uh, there were people related to um, engineering and uh, architecture. And, and like, so the lucky, the lucky thing was like at the time, stars, whatever, put us together and we wanted to, to rebuild this society, recreate like an idea of like sustainable society. And the luck brought me to Tani no Chikara as well. So after one year, I started my project in Awaji, then I met them and it's like, well, we think we, we match completely. Perfect. So this is very interesting. Um, uh, Daisuke and Yumi, I think uh, you have like traveled a lot in Japan as well. You have met so many people and Michele, uh, like all of us know that you have traveled almost the entire uh, world, every part of every continent you, you've been there. In Japan itself, you've done so many prefectures. So <laughs> whenever you guys meet new people or people, uh, you know, who have the same thinking, same passion, like all of us do, have you seen this common passion or interest in them also for sustainability doesn't matter if they are Japanese or uh, Korean or Australian Italian Indian anybody have you seen that common thread of passion for sustainability in people <laughs> で、私たちだけがここでやっていてもしょうがないけど、同じパッションを持った世界の人々と共に、でもとっても伝えるのが難しい日本人に私たちが伝えることが私たちの役割だと思っている。と思ってます。Basically, <笑> um, what they're saying is that it's easier for them to find foreigners um, having the same interest and passion because when they're sharing their kind of passion and ideas to Japanese. Uh, according to Japanese, sometimes it's kind of hard or difficult to understand, uh, like, how to do it. It's like, that's too much work, or like, it's something like, really, like, kind of, not impossible, but really hard to make. And one thing that I would like to do, to add is that their great idea is that they want to introduce or include people who are not yet into this kind of, like, thought, like by doing education. And mm. education is not just towards the school, as Yumi said before, that they are uh, teaching to um, uh, high schools in, in Osaka, but they also, and we were also trying to gather to, to do workshop to adults and families. So it's like the, the thing of Tanina Chika is like really global, even in, in, in just Awaji. Global means like it's englobing, it's in, in, including everything, everyone. So education, uh, taiken, as you said, like uh, experience, like physical experience. There is the keiken, which is like the long life experience. That's mm -hmm. something that you bring with yourself. And that's exactly what I like in that. It's like without education, you cannot prepare the future. Mm. Perfect. And what about you, Michele? Have you met more people uh, or is it very difficult to meet people who are into sustainability? Um, I always I always believe that we are kind of like uh, particles, mm. like kind of chemical particles. And if we are stable, there is no chemical reaction. Like there is nothing happening, nor physical, nor chemical. And But if we're moving and we're interested in something and that can be related to uh, life, like finding your love or like fi finding like your 
Ikigai is like the, the job of your life, what you want to do. And it's also like passion, which this can become Ikigai. This can become like the work of your life. Like just by moving and meeting other people, you can kind of fish in that sense, mm-hmm. other people interested in that. Like it's hard to find people with the same interest exactly in your same neighborhood. And I'm not saying everyone has to move, but like if you want to follow what you like, you need to try and look like a bit around you, a bit outside your comfort zone. Mm. So mm. definitely I met a lot of people with similar passion. It can be hard this time or like it was a bit harder maybe a few years ago, but now it's increasing, especially in Japan. So that's that's wonderful. Uh, and I think if more and more uh, young people, uh, I like to call myself young, so... If more, <laughs> if more and more young people like ourselves, uh, we get into sustainability, then uh, probably we can achieve uh, the SDGs targets by 2030 across the world. So, so that's amazing. Um, in fact, uh, I would like to congratulate all the Japanese uh, with a couple of uh, things that the Japanese government is doing right now. Uh, one is about the plastic bags when they have finally decided to charge for the plastic bags. Uh, kudos. <laughs> and uh, secondly is uh, the they have decided to shut down 100 of old coal power plants uh, you know like power plants which were uh, fueled by coal so uh, the Japanese government has uh, decided to do something like that as well that is also great because a lot of European nations are doing it uh, India China are doing it so I think the world is moving in the right direction <laughs> が、あの、火力発電、石炭、石炭のそうそう、石炭の火力発電はできるだけ廃止して、ただ、え、効率的な火力発電、石油とかを使ってその二酸化炭素をできるだけ出さない火力発電はむしろ広げていくって言っているん
思っています。はい。<笑> so, uh, well, the, this whole introduction was about、um, Earthbeck House is made of, like, as you said, like the soil, and the soil is coming exactly from the same spot. It's like no, no more than like 10 meters away from where we are. And it includes、uh, lime, like lime powder,、um, pebbles, or a bit bigger than pebbles.、Uh, it also has water, and、uh, in order to help like, to get dry or harder、uh, faster, you can use、uh, cement. Uh, but you don't really need to use cement if you、mm. have the right temperature, the right time.、Uh, it just takes a bit longer to get hard.、Um, of course, like to make the, the house, like we, we work with、uh, architects. So people are specialized in building earth back houses. And,、uh, but the house can be made by anyone. So, of course, you need a supervisor like, to, to check that everything, every, every single step, every single layer we're making、uh, needs to be checked, needs to be controlled if it's online, if it's too high, too, too low,、uh, like to like, open or not, because like, you know, the structure needs to be like, strong enough for earthquakes,、uh, for any kind of like, natural disaster that is happening in Japan, unluckily.、Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, Really, anyone can do that. And that's the great thing that they're doing is like、uh, people like, from any background can come, can learn,、uh, experience, and, and after like three weeks, two weeks, you just, you just build the house. The only small problem in Japan right now is that there is no law covering、um, earth bag houses. So、oh. for now, it's not, it's not possible uh, to. Uh, Sleep and live in there.、Mm. So, right now in Tanino Chikara, we are using, we are using, even if I'm not there, but <laughs> we are using the,、uh, the Earth Deck House as like a showroom、mm. uh, where we also like store like the seeds for the next year,、uh, where we、uh, show, for instance, like how the house works. So, like no electricity, but like、uh, playing with the air,、uh, with the current,、uh, playing with the shading for, for the sun. Sunlight,、uh, playing like with the insulation from the soil, and also like、uh, it's well known that the soil, the, the, the earth is,、uh, is good insulator,、uh, insulation like material. So if, if, you, if you come, for instance, like in summer, you will see the difference like from a、like, really humid 30、mm. degrees temperature outside, like in, in the field, and then you get inside, and all of a sudden it's like a really Like cool 26 degrees,、uh, not too sunny inside, and that, that's amazing. That's really like, I, I just got to know like one year ago about that, and like I was, I was shocked. Well, that's, that's amazing.、Um, so, this might be a technical question, and I think we will have to work together to,、uh, you know, get the message across in English here. But、uh, so we'll try our best.、Um, <laughs> So, you pointed out very, something very interesting, Michele, that the challenge with earth bag houses in Japan right now is that there are no regulations from the government. So, people cannot stay inside those houses because, well, maybe the government thinks they're not safe or they're not good. How can we change that with the government? How can we tell the government and the authorities that earth bag houses are perfectly safe and they are the best kind of sustainable, affordable housing? Uh, that we can make today? Gambate. <laughs> <laughs>、um, we, we, did, we did try to make a, a new role,、mm. new law、mm. for the a s p a l t house. But,、um, and we have to examine, we have to test、mm. um, for the a s p a l t house. Like a、uh, strength in the machine, to ka, tai gai to ka. So, you don't know what it is. The test of Shina Kikinai Kedo. We need a huge money, huge、mm. money. So, this time, um, Akira Meta, the Nunti, Akira Meta. We don't do the t- now. We decide not、give、to、up. take it. Yeah, <laughs> not give up. Not give up. <laughs> just for now. But,、um, you know, and then we think 
we are telling more people about how to um, uh, how important the alphabet has meaning, and that we should tell the people the message. And then we think something changes in the future. You know that people think, you know, the kangai o kaete, totemo daiji na mono de areba, sono oki na mono ga kawaru nja nai ka to mutte. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah. like, like, um, basically, it, it, it's based on the fact of like changing a little by little, like the way of thinking about like this uh, kind of word and topic. And like, if you if these little changes can occur in like on a vast scale, then like the bigger things can be changed as well. Mm. And what is going on in Japan right now is also like. In different parts of Japan, a lot of people are getting more and more interested in permaculture and in like sustainable buildings. So that can be like a big voice in the future, or like even influencing some kind of like fields, like architecture um, association, uh, or like even in the government. Maybe like we can we can get to 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 have like the big change. And uh, she was explaining before also. Uh, that in order to get uh, the approval, like for like living in these kind of buildings, uh, you need to do all the testing for like uh, earthquakes or wind, uh, for the water, uh, for floods, for instance, and like and get like a certificate and approval. So after you do that, then you can you can like uh, certify as like a safe place to live. But that, as she said, is, is it would take a lot of money. Mm. Michele, so as you've traveled so many to so many places around the world, have you seen such movements in other parts of the world, and how are they doing it? Like maybe in Italy or Brazil, where you spent a lot of time. So what they saw in Brazil, where I am in Brazil, it's starting right now, like a slow con- consciousness about like environment. Hmm. Nothing yet about buildings where I went to, but I'm sure there are communities like that. So there is a huge community in every city that is trying to create uh, urban um, farms. And like a lot of farmers like trying to save the uh, the rainforest um, by like kind of like stopping it and showing that you can produce way more by using different techniques, even mm-hmm. like ancestral, like Brazilian native like techniques. or. Uh, for instance, in Australia, is like known for like more than 20 years, like per the use of permaculture like approach. Uh, so uh, that is also like uh, thinking more about like the environment and like the climate. For instance, Australia is really dry in summer. So like the idea uh, of like digging doesn't exist. Like you need to build like the layers of the soil mm. in order to recreate the ecosystem. Mm. But Honestly, personally, like when it comes to buildings, like sustainable buildings, I see Japan as in strong need because uh, the normal architecture in Japan is not meant for insulation, is not meant for like energy, uh, saving energy. It's just meant to like build fast in an easy way and cheap way. Mm-hmm. Well, probably in Italy, when, when I'm talking about my area, like we still have earthquakes. And we have been building houses for earthquakes since before. Not as strong as Japan, though. Uh, but, like, you know, the walls are, like, I don't know, one meter thick. <laughs> and, like, the windows have, like, three layers. Like, I'm talking about my, my apartment in, in Italy. It's, like, in summer, it's hot. But, like, you can create, like, really nice, like, um, um, uh, current. And no need of AC. And even if it's, like, 80% humidity and 32 degrees, it's still great living there and in winter is the same when it's like one degree outside inside it goes really slowly down and like you just need maybe one hour of heating and then it's like perfect and the earthquake house has that concept Mm -hmm. so the idea now is like not being sustainable is being more like regenerative it's like kind of generating on your own the needs that you you have so you need to be cooler your house is doing it you don't need like a cooling system for that. You need to be warmer. Your house is doing it. And then 
next to that, like earth bag houses, you can have like a tank that is collecting water and you use that for your daily needs. And then it can, there can be like a solar panel. There can be like any kind of system. And that's what I was doing like in Awaji with like the engineers, like trying to see how we can be even more like self-sufficient. Wow, perfect. So, and uh, I think uh, you, you guys... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think I think Michele, you touched upon something very important over there when you talked about Brazil, that people are using techniques uh, which are ancestral, which come from you know uh, our ancestors generations ago. And this is uh, this is one of my f the first things that came to my mind when I saw the earth bag house was that okay, so it's a house made up of soil or mud, and in rural India, even today, you can see such houses everywhere. So what they do is they build a house and then they will put mud on it, like like plaster. Mm. Instead of cement, they will put mud. And actually, it's not only mud, it's a mixture of mud and hay and uh, cow dung. Uh, so it keeps the insects away. It keeps the house cool in summer and warm during winters. So do you think we should... All of us, like all the people on this planet, should go back to how we used to do things maybe a few centuries ago because it is just better for the nature. Mm. So my boss. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I think so. So 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 認識として日本、日本において言えば、え、もうクーラーがエアコンがある。エアコンって言った、え、伝わる。え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、
外の中で解放された自然の中でいるっていうのは非常に気持ちがいいっていうのに気づくきっかけになっているので非常に日本の中でもそれがその社会が変わっていくきっかけとしては非常にいいタイミングだと思っている。はい、多分これ世界的にもそうかもしれないし日本語でも OK です OK です難しいよはいいいどうぞはい<笑>あ OK so, so I guess like as you might have heard like he's talking about like this period because of like COVID-19 or COV2 or whatever it's called um, so basically it's like the right moment for like people to understand uh, like the importance of like the, the normal temperature outside because now it wasn't comfortable and not like allowed to stay in too many people indoor and now people had to experience like how to like uh, how is the temperature outside how is life outside you know sometimes uh, in Japan it's like you work in the office when you once you're done you're just going through like a train and then you're home and you barely stay outside. Um, like, an interesting thing I have to say is like, among all the parts of like, uh, I've been, among all the companies in Awaji, uh, Tanina Chikara was basically the only one that uh, worked the whole time outdoor. Because mm -hmm. there is already social distancing there. Like you are together, but like you have wind, you have air, Uh, you have so many things to do. Yeah, you don't have to be packed in one in one mm -hmm. spot, mm -hmm. and that, that's also showing like the the great uh, opportunities and and the, the great timing for for this kind of project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's that's amazing actually, and uh, this just shows this just proves that um, as humans we have already understood how to live with nature, but Uh, somehow we keep forgetting that you know we have to respect nature also and uh, s sooner or later we have to go back to it and uh, you guys are doing the right thing in that direction I think when it comes to education uh, they were they were saying like they are trying to uh, show to other people um, how like to live in this way how to think about like um, like nature and environment And the greatest thing is that they're also doing like uh, training for the new employees of the company. So Tanina Chikara is related to um, another company in Japan. It's really famous for uh, human resources. And um, like the new employees of these companies are sent to Tanina Chikara. And this gives uh, like um, a huge opportunity for Tanina Chikara and for these uh, young people, like 20, 21, 21 years old. Uh, to understand what is nature. Like, probably these people are actually, I, we encountered, like, we met a lot of new employees, and every time, like, they had no clue how a tomato was, like, how, like, a tomato plant, how, like, uh, chili peppers grow, uh, or, like, they didn't know that, um, you know, uh, peanuts were from the ground. They were thinking they were, like, coming from the trees. Uh, like, they had no clue of what, like, nature was. And this is giving, like, like kind of like a free free ticket to all these people to learn about nature uh, from 21 years old, not like, like me at, like, 28 or other people at 35. It's, like, 21 years old. Mm -hmm. That means that they are in their, like, strongest moment of life, a lot of power, a lot of will to do. They can shape their mind understanding how like to live with the uh with nature and that's that's awesome and plus as they're doing like with even younger people from high school and middle high school or like with families that that's like that's great and that's the way you can kind of change as we were talking before like how to move the world uh from like the concrete jungle uh no green no farms in the city to more like a rural life mm. but the biggest problem to me is that we are so many and i see impossible to move all, all these people from the city to the rural area mm. what you can do is a gradual moving out but 
it's never going to be like that because not everyone has the same needs or the same feeling. So we have to accept that people like, like to live in the city and they want to do that. The way we can do it is like also making the city productive, also making the city more sustainable and its own right there. And like the people who would like to move to the farms, like trying to create like an environment that can um, host everyone, but at the same time, like keep uh, producing to like for the survival of everyone. So that's uh, very interesting, actually. And I think my next question comes from there. That's okay, Yumi. I, I want to ask uh, this question to you as to uh, what Michele said was it is very difficult for people living in the cities, especially in, in a country like Japan, which is a very big country population wise, but most of the people live in cities. How is it uh, that the architects who design these and the urban planners who design these big cities and who are thinking of the future of Tokyo, Osaka, Nagoya and so on? How are they looking at earth bag houses and are they willing to learn from earth bag houses and implement those techniques in cities? Because not everyone can move to Awaji. They're really interested in us house and they're asking us how to make it, how to build it. And then the concept is they think it's great, but あの、アスパックハウスイズノットなんていうの。本当に日本向きではない。ええ、方が人と。そう、湿度とかヒューメンエンダーザウェザー。ザアスパックイズアスパックハウスイズアンノットザベストフォージャパン。ウィアンダース
Mm. Like I heard so many ways of building houses, like straw bale houses and with mud and every time, like unless it was the old Japanese way of building, whatever other technique that was coming from abroad, it was like, I don't know, but that, that doesn't match with oh. the humidity of Japan. So, and there are proof, like there, there is proof in Japan that they're building it right now in Okayama Prefecture. Uh, they're doing it. And I, I think sometimes the mentality is like, well, it's not exactly like the comfort that we want for the Japanese standard. That's why that is not matching. And because of this, many times, like, it's, it's stopping, like, this, like, new ideas. But at the same time, what, they, what uh, Yumi was saying is that uh, there are architects uh, who are trying to uh, use some of these techniques when it comes to, um, like, insulation or thinking. Like, they are changing their mind, like, thinking and trying to put in their design uh, this kind of concept. Mm -hmm. So th that's like the, the good point, like from your, uh, like the good answer, like, or the answer from your question is like, yes, they are not thinking of implementing um, earth bag house in Japan in normal cities because it's not matching with the Japanese weather or like um, environment. Mm -hmm. But does it mean that they're not trying to implement their design with more sustainable solution mm -hmm. inspired by earth bag house? And then the other part, uh, in Japan, like the traditional houses, they were made with a kind of mix of um, rice husk, um, mm. rice straw, and mud, and uh, also using like um, like uh, wood like to build the houses. Uh, and the way it was made before, it's like, uh, not made, but like uh, the problem was like it was easily, like, like the, the nature could easily like destroy it. That in the past they were used to like rebuild houses pretty often. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm just trying to understand this. Um, so in the past they would rebuild houses uh, easily because they would use the rice straw. And uh, so are the Japanese architects saying that um, that is not possible with the earth bag house, or uh, what is the challenge here? Uh, yeah, the, the architecture um, said to us, like, uh, there's a much more great way to build the, ha ha the house in Japan, like I use, use the rice straw. And mm. then, yeah, we, we give them the idea about sustainable, sustainable house, and they give us an idea about the uh, the old way to, mm -hmm. um, to build build the house. And then uh, we think it's a challenge to get the idea from the architect architecture. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna do we are going to plan the house with the restaurant. Mm -hmm. Oh interesting. Yeah. So the, the we should um yeah it's a great thing great things to you know the move forward mm -hmm. we, you know we don't think it's a good the best idea the no the I I don't think the Asbak house is the best thing. So we we need to change and they need to change. So we have to talk uh, each other about sustainability, you know. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's a very interesting uh, perspective. Um, and, you know, so, so you're working with the architects and the architects are willing to work with you to find better ways of making uh, more sustainable housing in Japan. That's amazing. And since uh, you guys are in Awaji, and, uh, you know, Nambu-san is so interested in the project. Have you met uh, Tadao Ando? Uh, no. No? No. Oh, that, that would have been amazing if, if we could get, you know, his perspective on sustainable housing. So maybe next time, maybe next time when we do an yes. interview. <laughs> so for all the uh, people who are watching this video, uh, Tadao Ando is, uh, is a once-in-a-generation talent. He's... I think one of the most famous architects from Japan, 
Uh, and he's not only famous in Japan, he's famous all over the world. Uh, he's uh, one of those visionary architects which uh, young students look up to and, you know, older architects aspire to be somebody like him. So uh, maybe in the next interview, we will have some insights uh, from uh, Trawando as well. That'll be like amazing. All right, guys, um, I'm just going to ask one more question. And uh, so we kept on talking about earth bag houses. And the, one of the reasons why we keep talking about earth bag houses when we talk to uh, both Daisuke and Yumi is because that is visible. So you can see it, you know, when you read Seedbed, okay, like, oh, that is the White House. Oh, wow, amazing. And that is the amazing, uh, you know, uh, bench and seating uh, arrangement that you guys made. But there are so many other things which are happening on the Seedbed. There is permaculture, there is uh, composting. What are the other ways uh, which people should change their lives so that they can make them more sustainable? What are all the other things that you guys are doing and all the other things that you want to do in the future and educate people about them? えっと、基本農、農業じゃなくて、農、うん。昔は日本は当たり前だし、多分世界もきっと当たり前だったけども、今は農業という産業になったことによって、え、景気とかその資本主義にものすごく影響を受ける産業になってしまっていて、ただ日本に例えば、え、昔は100 を自分たちで作れるし、何でも服だって自分たちで作れるという人たちがほとんどの国民だった。から、そういうその自然とそもそも共生している共生して生きてきた、ああ、文化っていうのを日本人は改めてその、もう一回学び直すというか理解するってい
uh, that that's the, the the main the main clue is like try to learn as much as possible, be curious, uh, and try to make other people curious. That's I think the the challenge. Mm. It's like making people curious enough to want to come and learn. Mm. You know, it's just like me. Like recently, I, I've never had interest in making miso or in some kind of uh, koji, which is like a fungus uh, from Japan. But like you know, people made me taste the homemade one. They showed me the way it was in the past, and I was like, my, my brain blew up. It's like, this is the thing, and then little bit is oh, so you can make it on your own. It's not like an industry. It's not like a fa- factory, and that's where like my interest started in in like wanting to make my own miso, like miso soup or miso ramen, and it's the same with like plants. You know, people are bringing like you know. I like I love when I go around with people like taking a leaf from a camp for uh, Kusonoki, uh, like taking it, breaking it, showing like people like the, the smell, uh, showing like oh that plant is edible. That plant. I was like, how do you know these things? It's just because you're in the nature. It's like how can I learn more? It's like oh yeah, come with me. We do something. I show you how to prepare these things. So. When I talk about nettle, I don't know now in Japanese how to say nettle, but it's like a itchy plant, like the, the bottom part of the of the uh, leaf, if you touch it, it, you become like really itchy. Mm. But in Europe and also in America, I think in India, it's widely used for like uh, the mix of like, you know, your ravioli or like your um, mm. gyoza, for instance, or it's used in soups and many things. And people don't know it. You just need to show it. Same like on how to make a tomato plant like how not to make how to grow it like now i'm so happy because just like by showing my passion people get interested and now they're all asking me and calling me as if i'm like you know like the most expert like biology like not biology but like biologist or whatever it's like oh uh or farmer like oh do, can you tell me like what they need to use to to grow my own chili peppers and tomatoes and and whatever it's like i didn't have that experience like the like long term experience, but I have like that small like passion, and people can learn from that. But that's the amazing thing in anything. Like whether you are like vegan, like or, or like you you believe in something else. Like showing your passion, why you like it, and not why you hate other things, or why uh, like you know even even in sustainability, instead of like talking bad about uh, who are not sustainable, who's not sustainable, who's destroying the nature. Like, let's try to show the other part, the nice one, why we're doing it, why we're passion. Mm-hmm. And if it's a good thing, people will join, like, whatever. Like, they, do, they don't really calculate anything. They see the passion, they see the good, and they will join. So what they're doing is amazing. They're, they just said uh, they're not doing agriculture. They're not making veggies to sell it, like to become a company selling veggies. They're making veggies because in the past, that's how people were doing it. Like they were being sustainable and they own creating their own food. And in this, in this case, if we want to have customers coming for camping or glamping, mm-hmm. we want to produce mm-hmm. the food that they're going to eat like right next to their like place, like, like right next to the place, like the, the camping, the uh, bungalow mm-hmm. uh, they're living, you know, they're staying at. That, that's, Awesome. That, that's that's the way we should do it. So for me, like the learning, sharing, sharing passion, uh, showing how happy we are doing this, that's the clue. That's the, the main thing we have to do. Amazing. Amazing, guys. In fact, uh, Michele, you've talked so much about food. Now I'm getting hungry. And I remember, <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember the day that we did our live video uh, when we uh, talked about sustainability through the Sesame Project. And we had such amazing food. Everyone made food that day. It was so amazing. I I would love to be back in Taneno Chikara in seat bed and do it all over again. Me too. So final question, guys. Uh, and uh, what about the future? Uh, Daisuke, Yumi, what are you planning for the future of the seat bed? What are the different things? Uh, what are the different activities that you're going to do? Uh, and how are you getting involved in them? Now, uh, 
そのあのシードベッドで研修がしたい学びをしたいっていう、えー、問い合わせが少しずつ増えてきているっていうのであの最終的には淡路だけじゃなくて日本全国なんだろう世界に広がっていく形でシードベッドアナザーシードベッドをいろんなところに作っていきたいと思っていて。それをすることによってその僕たち淡路がってことじゃなくていろんな地域がサステナブルな地域になっていってみんなが当たり前に貧困とか飢餓とかそういうものがなくあの暮らせるような社会が作っていけると思っています。はい。はい。<笑> yeah,、um, there is a request from us, one of the、uh, school from 神奈川県 Okay. Yeah, they won't make、um, a, the seed bed there.、Ooh. So, wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> And then that's,、uh, we think that's a great start. It, they, people think、um, people have the power to do their, their selves. So, if I a s k t h e the Awaji that is a e a 日本中、世界中にシードベッドみたいな場所が出てきればいいなと思ってます。Like, her way to just like send it to me, like translate for me. Yeah, <laughs> like, over to you, Michele. <laughs> yeah, no problem. No problem. It's easy. It's, it's really easy, simple. Like, the idea is like the next step is like trying to expand this idea and concept that are similar to seed bed. All over Japan, as they said, Zenkoku.、Uh, but also, like,、uh, trying to like, find and connect and recreate the same kind of feeling and, and project also around the world.、Mm. That, that's basically the way they want to do it. So, keep going on with the good things they're doing there.、Uh, keep sharing because, you know, if they never started, no one from Kanagawa would have been interested in creating another one.、Mm-hmm. So, the importance of like, being constant and like, keeping this kind of project all around the planet can get more and more people. That's the normal like, chain reaction influence that they, we can do in this planet. Perfect. Michele, please tell us about your future. And we all know he's doing something really interesting. It's, it's, it's a big adventure. Please explain to us what you're doing and why you're doing it. <laughs> so,、uh, The main、um, project I'm working on now, right now is my dream of making Nihonshu or sake, like Japanese sake,、uh, in Italy with、uh, local products.、Uh, the idea started、uh, three years ago when I was thinking about like, the situation of like, rice farmers in Italy. And I wanted to basically、um, improve the price or the quality of. The, the rice like sold. So I, I, don't, I don't remember the word for now, but like, it's like increase the value of the produce. So it's not like using too much, but like, you know, transforming like something that is really cheap right now in something that can be sold like for higher prices, which means also like buying it for a higher price from the,、um, mm-hmm. from the farmers and helping them like to be sustainable on their own.、Uh, so I want to use local products. I want to promote like, local uh, like, ingredients, like,、um, well, the rice,、uh, which is not only used for like, sake, you know.、Uh, and then at the same time, my dream is to connect Japan and Italy. So, like, to keep this connection between the two cultures. So, right now in Japan, I'm helping NPOs or like,、uh, NGOs, like nonprofit organizations in Japan, trying to. Improve what they're doing with like the different fields、uh, and using like Italian, like Messen, like Italian, like improvements.、Yes. Um, and then I want to do kind of the same back to Italy, like trying to introduce, for instance, like the Japanese way of doing tourism. Like the tourists like coming to Japan, they're doing a like totally different way, like tourism compared to like the Italian guests or like the guests we have in Italy. So, I also want to promote more like the local、um, activities, the local craftsmen,、uh, the local produce. Because, you know, I think 90%, 99% of the people going to Italy can rely on to the fact that 
they go to Milan, they go to Rome, they go to Venice, they go maybe to Naples, uh, Florence, and they visit the city, like historical city architecture, and then they want to eat in a like Italian restaurant, of course. <laughs> but that's so limiting compared to what I know in Italy, to all the things, the cultural things you have in smaller towns, like the, the, like the food culture, the, the craft, like anything. So that's another project I'm trying to do. So it's a mix of like promoting Italian culture in Italy and in Japan and promoting the Japanese culture in Italy as well. And yeah, the, the next step is mainly like trying to make sake mm. with Italian water. Uh, now, right now I'm trying to find out like all the ingredients like from Kobo, which is the yeast, and Koji, which is this um, uh, like fungi, like, yeah, kind of like, like, but it's not a bacteria, but like, kind of like that and like once I have all the ingredients like back in Italy trying to start like a new company there wow perfect I mean most of uh, what Michele said is so important in today's world connecting people uh, across the world but I think uh, for me it was sake that you talked about <laughs> that was the most interesting <laughs> No, uh, it's, it's been amazing uh, having you guys uh, over here and thank you so much for doing this, uh, taking out time and showing so much patience. Um, and I think together we are going to do a lot about sustainability. Just because we're talking about sustainability, I would like to share what I'm doing for SDGs. Uh, we're trying yeah. to, uh, you know, work towards creating education uh, systems in India much better. So it is SDG 4. And then I'm also working on a few projects uh, which will improve the access to information, uh, legal information and information about your rights and so many other things. So that is SDG 16. <clears throat> and then, you know, we are combining, we are collaborating with people across the world. So that is SDG 17. And for all of you out there, if you don't know about SDGs yet, you need to because right now is the perfect <laughs> time. If you do not think about SDGs during COVID-19 crisis, Oh, then we are really falling behind. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you. <laughs> and keep awesome. doing the good work. Uh, you guys will always have my support. And yeah, thank you. You too. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.